This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be looking at 10 crazy operators that I rarely use in Python. And some of these are actually just going to be combinations of operators. And to get started, we're going to create two sets of type integer, which will contain first one, two, three, and the second set, which we can just duplicate, will contain two, three, and four. Now, if we were to use dot notation with any one of these sets, you'll notice that we're going to have some default set methods, such as difference, intersection, and so on. But with sets, you can actually use some operators to perform these operations. For example, if you want to combine two sets, you can use this union operator or the pipeline to combine them. So if we type in A pipeline B, we're going to get the wrong script run as always. So once we type in A pipeline B, we're going to get the union of those two sets. It's going to combine those two. If you want to subtract elements from one set, for example, if you want to subtract the elements of B from A, you can do that using the minus. So if we try to take two, three, and four away from A, we're going to be left with one. Four doesn't exist, so it's not even going to bother, but two and three do exist. So these get removed from A. Otherwise, we can also find the symmetric difference using A, up arrow, B. And I believe some people refer to this as a caret. Whatever name suits you, just know it's this up arrow. And running that will give you back the symmetric difference. And the symmetric difference are the elements that both sets do not share. So these sets share two and two, three and three, but they do not share one and four. And that's why we got one and four back. And finally, we can also find the intersection by typing in A and B. And this will find what those two sets have in common. So if we were to run this one more time, you'll notice we will get two and three back because both of these sets have two and three in them. Up next, we have the snail operator or the matrix multiplication operator. And to use it, we're going to import numpy as np. And you're going to have to install that if you did not already. Then we're going to define two arrays and this will be an np array that contains this matrix. So one, two, three, four. And usually you'll see it formatted like that. Then we can copy that. We can paste that, create B and B is going to contain five, six. Let's take those commas away and seven and eight. So now we have two matrices. And with this snail operator, we can type in A at B and that's going to perform a matrix multiplication. So we're going to get this as an output. And if you want to know how matrix multiplication works, you're going to have to do some further research. That's far beyond the scope of this video. But when you import NumPy, you can use this without any further setup. If you do not import NumPy, then you're going to have to define it yourself. For example, we might have a class called example. And inside here, we can define the matrix multiplication dunder method. And then you return whatever you want to return. Hopefully you're going to return a matrix multiplication. But then with this, we can type in X equals example and Y equals example. So that the next time we try to use X snail Y, it will actually work. Moving on, we have another operator that works with dictionaries. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to create a dictionary called A of type string to integer. And that's going to equal A1, B2. And then we will duplicate that, change this to B, write C3 and D4. So now we have two dictionaries. And suppose we want to combine these two dictionaries. Well, the easiest way to do this is by using the union operator once again. So A pipeline B, and what you're going to get as an output are these two dictionaries combined. Now, something that's quite interesting is that you can do this in place as well by typing in A pipeline equals B. So now that's going to assign this combination to A. So the next time we print A, we're going to get that combination back. Of course, you should pick what's most readable, but the benefit of using this approach is that it gives you this funny face back that kind of looks like eh. Moving on to crazy operator number seven. And this is one that we use for bitwise inversion. And I believe it's called a tilde, 
Let me know in the comment section down below. I always mess these names up. But this symbol here is used for bitwise inversion. For example, if we were to print tilde five, what we're going to get back is negative six. And this is because five contains the bits of 0101. And when you perform a bitwise inversion, it changes all the zeros to one and all the one to zeros. So this is what's happening when we use the tilde. And we can also do this with NumPy arrays. So here we can type in bool array, np.array, and insert our array of booleans or integers. One, zero, zero, one, zero. And it's important to specify that this is of type boolean if you insert ones and zeros. Otherwise, it's going to treat them as integers. So here we'll type in dtype to be boolean. And dtype just stands for data type. Then what we can do is refer to our tilde, and I really hope I'm not getting this name wrong, and insert our Boolean array. And what it's going to return to us is the same array, but inverted. Now, what I'm about to show you next is something that I like to call the pistol operator. It's not an official name and it's not even an operator, but that's what I like to personally call it. And I'll explain why in just a moment. So this is what it's going to look like. Asterisk underscore comma. And then we need to insert some sorts of iterable, such as Python. Now my pi is going to complain, but we're going to ignore that. And I think we can just do that by typing in type ignore. Am I illiterate? Suppress my pi error. Type ignore. Ah, it wasn't the combination. Anyway, that will suppress it in my pi. But watch what happens now when we print the underscore. What we're going to get back is a list of this string because what we're doing here is actually unpacking whatever iterable we place in front of us and placing it inside this underscore. And to simplify this, all we're doing is using the unpacking syntax in an interesting way. So if we had a one, two, and three, you probably know that using an asterisk will absorb any of the remaining elements. So a is going to take one and asterisk b is going to take two and three. That's all we're doing here. We're saying that the first element is going to absorb everything. And the reason I like to call this the pistol operator is because it looks like an upside down pistol, but you're not required to use the underscore. You can even use a silly letter such as O. And then here you can paste in one, two, three as a set so that the next time you print O, you will get a syntax error because this should be a comma. And then you'll get this unpacked, inserted into a list and then printed as a list. Now, does this actually have any practical use? I don't know. I don't think so because it's not really that readable. In every case here, we could have literally just have taken this, used the list constructor and pasted in there. And we would get the same output in a readable format. But personally, I think it's quite amusing that you can do this kind of stuff, even if it's illegible. Moving on, we're going to be looking at the floor division operator, which are just two slashes. So suppose you have an integer with the value of 11 and another integer with the value of three. If you were to actually divide these normally, so you were to divide A by B, what you're going to get back is some crazy decimal. But in some cases, you're going to want to get back a whole number. So if we use the floor division operator, we're going to get a whole number back. Now, this is not guaranteed to be an integer because if you have a float somewhere in this equation, it's going to return to you a float. But regardless of what you insert, it's going to return a whole number. And whatever the result of this division will be, it's always going to round it down. That's why we got three instead of four. Because as you might recall, what we got back earlier was 3.6. And some people would think that that would round up. But with floor division, it rounds down. Now that's probably nothing new. And you probably learned this on your first day of Python. But something that I still find crazy looking is the in place operation for this. If I ever saw this in any code base, it would take me probably a minute or two just to understand what this is. I mean, obviously it's an in place operation where we divide A by B and assign it back to A. But still looking at this is ridiculous. To have two slashes and an equal sign is just such weird syntax. And finally, I've saved the best for last. And this isn't an operator in particular, but a huge combination of operators that can really annoy your colleagues. So something I found out about recently in Python is that you can add 
a plus, and then in between that plus and the next integer, or whatever value you're adding, you can add as many minuses and pluses as you want. And then you can add a five at the end, or whatever you want. Because the first plus is going to be the actual operation, and the rest is going to be the sign for the integer, because obviously you can add 10 plus negative five, and that's going to be a valid operation. And that's no different than all of this. So if you were to write this in Python, it's going to be considered valid code. And we're going to get five back because apparently this ended up being a negative five. And that can be quite confusing because a negative and a negative make a positive, but another negative will turn this once again into negative five. So somewhere down the line, this turned negative. And something even more ridiculous is that you can type in something such as underscore equals five, double underscore equals 10. And now you can really have fun making nonsense. So let's say underscore, underscore, minus, underscore, minus, underscore, underscore, minus, minus, underscore. And for me, it's hard to believe that this is actually valid Python code. I mean, it looks ridiculous, but it actually works. If we were to actually run this, we're going to get this output because here we have 10, five, 10, and five. And we can actually add one more five. So we get a different result such as negative five, and that will work just fine. And that's exactly how I'd like to conclude this crazy operators video. Do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about all of these crazy operators and whether you have any operators which I happen to miss. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.